Jeff, you want to get some pizza? You killed Agathor. How could you do that? Oh, come on. It was just a character in a game. You know when you dumped me? I blame myself. But after what you did to your brother, you're just heartless. You're bad candy, babe. Oh, come on. I have to do this again? <gasps> I just buffed that! Oh, fine. I mean, use. Hi, I'm a kitty monk. I'm here to talk to you about the Owl House. Or more specifically, Alador Blight. For the third time. But considering the specials, you might get a fourth video, so don't hold your breath. A few weeks ago, my first Alador Blight video went the way of Queen Moon and got a hundred thousand views. Thanks again, guys. To celebrate, I reviewed the episode Reaching Out, which was a major part of his development. The episode saw Amity tell off Alador for going along with Odalia's plans to treat her like a living doll and for Alador to finally understand how hard they were pushing her. In the end, Alador promised he would try harder, which Amity took as an adequate step in the right direction. In that video, I made the point that while he went a long way, Alador was still a neglectful parent. He only bonded with Amity and seemed seems to view the twins as an afterthought at best. Still, I liked how, instead of forgiving Aldor, the episode calls him out on his actions and says that a simple apology isn't enough. If he wants to be a good dad, he has to prove it. Granted, I liked how the episode pointed out that Aldor was only doing what he thought was best for his daughter. I goofed off a lot back then, but you have a bright future and shouldn't waste it on that nonsense. Uh, but You're welcome. Making the point he was proud of Amity's potential puts him leagues above characters like White Diamond. Time would tell if he actually turned over a new leaf, or if he were to fall into old patterns. And actually, time told. More than told. Actually, time screened right in my ear. Less than 10 hours later, the episode, Clouds on the Horizon, aired. Okay, fun fact, but that video was meant to come the week before. The reason it didn't was because I got busy packing up my dorm. And at that point, my dorm was really noisy, so I had to go all the way to the other side of campus and record on the top floor of a classroom. But the audio turned out alright, so I can't totally complain. So what exactly happened during the infamous episode? What's best for the family? is putting an end to all this. Okay, I'll concede. They sort of redeemed Aldor. Well, not redeemed, but his character journey, in my opinion, is basically over. Albeit, it ended on a high note. So, yay. No, I think he's kind of like a less perverted Stolas. So, I guess kind of like Doofenshmirtz, if Doofenshmirtz was a witch. He's made plenty of mistakes, but he's getting better. And it shows. Doesn't negate his behavior in the past. He still has a lot to atone for. But he has proven himself. That much I'll say. And to piggyback on that meme, I hope Aldor's got a good lawyer. Am I salty? Think like a hash brown, not a bowl of crackers. Like, yeah, I'm upset my timing was way off, but I still loved working on that video. You gotta admire the irony. I get so scared about making videos that'll end up outdated, and yet that video was outdated not even a day later. Besides, I already have sequel videos planned on other characters, especially Bellows and Camilla. Why would Aldor be any exception? The reason I made that video, on top of rewarding you guys, is because I honestly didn't expect them to revisit the Blight parents, outside of maybe a cameo or a joke. I thought reaching out was only added to help Amity's development, and since season 2B is the last real season, they might have wanted to tie up any loose ends, or touch base with certain characters they know we might not see again. Yeah, I'll be the first person to admit I have poor judgement. I guess one day I will get to Odalia, and maybe one on the family as a whole, to sort of wrap things up. But for now, we're discussing the final two episodes of The Owl House, and how they nicely wrap up Owl arc. Now these episodes are super plot heavy. I mean, the toy. As a result, I'm not really going to discuss everything that happens, but I will provide a teensy bit of background. In the episode, Hollow Mine, we discover the Day of Unity isn't merging Earth and the Demon Realm. Instead, it will involve killing every coven-branded witch through the use of a draining spell. As the time loop is finished, Bellows doesn't need Luce alive anymore. So in the episode, Edge of the World, the Emperor's Coven raids the Owl House. 
house, forcing Hootie, Ida, and Lilypad to evacuate and stay with the resistance. Thankfully, Luce and King later joined them. Also, off topic, but Rainstorm, I love your group's name and your rallying cry. We are the Covens against the throne. Wait, can we please not make this our battle cry? AKA the Cats. Of course, I can't use it because people will think I'm a furry. The Resistance has come up with a plan to thwart the Day of Unity by taking advantage of Ida's curse. She'll swap places with Rain, and her cursed magic will take out the Coven Heads and possibly kill them, who knows. Of course, Ida will have to be branded with a bard symbol, but the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. To the Resistance, it's much better than Plan A. I'll control a pair of abominations to release Everwolf's flesh-eating beetles into the crowd. It will create a distraction so big, we can get Ida up with the coven heads. Only a few people would get eaten. Even then, just the small ones. Is it bad I kinda wanted to see Darius's plan? In the meantime, Luce is worrying about Amity. So with the permission of Ida and the coven heads, Luce and King split up. We've got King the Titan and Luce the Human on our side. Legends in the making. Aren't you forgetting Jake the dog? That's how the song goes. King, most of all, wants to help, but Ida and Luce aren't having it, and honestly for good reason. I know you want to help, but we gotta keep this stuff a secret between us five for now. You may be a titan, but you're still a little guy. Of course, if Luce and King go to Blight Manor by themselves, they are gonna get creamed. So Darius and Katya insist on giving her a security escort. I don't need a security escort. Did you hear that, Gus? Yeah, no, I guess we'll have to go home. Well, it's been fun. <laughs> See you around, Loose the Human. Yes! And not just them. Thought you were all hiding after what happened at Hexhide. They were. But then they heard Darius ordered me to protect you. OMG, his arc came full circle. To think I thought he was gonna get absorbed by Bellows or betray them to preserve his honor. This new group, who, for the sake of reference, I'm gonna call the Scooby Gang, go to Blight Manor, donning the disguises of Coven Guards, with the Day of Unity almost upon them. Blight Industries is working day and night to help supply meet demand. To make matters worse, due to her numerous failures, Kiki has been demoted, finally, to delivery driver. Personally, I liked you better than that turncloak golden guard. Oh, if only there was a way to show Bellows your true worth. Not even delivery manager or assistant manager, but delivery driver. I wonder if Tara had anything to do with it. She even has to wear one of those stupid baseball caps and t-shirts. I like the scarf though. I guess Kiki has a pathological need to cover her mouth or she's using it to dilute herself into thinking she's still important. Kiki, you're not a cog or even a pawn anymore. Turns out people who aren't the fan base also hate Odalia, and Kiki is one of them. If only there was a way to throw Bello through. <clears throat> Let's get out of here. Eldor comes out and voices his concerns. Why would the Day of Unity have top-notch security? Don't you think it's odd that they need this much security for the Day of Unity? Because, you know, it's not a huge gathering of literally the entire island, likely all crammed together like a bunch of sardines. Yes, Eldor doesn't know what it's like to be in Times Square during New Year's, but you really need to imagine the amount of pickpockets and panhandlers that the Day of Unity is almost certainly gonna bring. Odell Dahlia herself is unfazed with this little leap of logic. Now previously, I said that my problem with Eldor was more so how the fandom treated him, not how the show treated him. It felt like the fandom had a tendency to romanticize him, even if all signs pointed to him being just as bad as his wife. I've even seen some people try and excuse his behavior, because he might be coded a certain way, like maybe he's autistic or has ADHD. If that's your interpretation, fine, but he's still a parent. That doesn't excuse the way he treats his kids. Of course, he doesn't lay a hand on them, but I think standing off to the side while Odalia is doing something bad is still a form of abuse. It's enabling. He didn't seem to care he was ruining the lives of three children just to teach Amity it's wrong for her GPA to go from a 4.0 to a 3.9. And that same episode showed that if Alder put his foot down, Odalia would listen. Many people in my comment sections kept saying I was wrong. Once again, they were right. Every time Kitty gets a prediction wrong, an angel loses its wings. Odalia is able to keep her hubby puppy in line with a certain fret, which I'm sure she's used on him more times than he can count. It might be time for the kids to play a more active role in Blight Industries. I could start the paperwork right now. 
I mean, it's not like they had Amity acting as a test dummy. Or the twins welcoming people inside. Or that only Amity is on the abomination track. Actually, all joking aside, I kind of like this approach. And I think it's better than him just being a flat out enabler. Again, I'm a little upset I was wrong, but you gotta admire the writing team. I don't think many shows have handled toxic relationships or parents in such a way. Especially one where the genders are reversed. They play it dead straight and it's beautiful. Actually, it's horrific, but you get what I mean. I enjoy how they make the point Odalia's abuse doesn't stop with her kids. While I'm sure there might have been love in their marriage at one point, at present, it's more like a business transaction and Odalia just happens to be the boss. I've even seen some people theorize the pair aren't married. Odalia it just sought him out for his abomination talents. And considering the flashback we get in King's Tide, it kind of makes me wonder if this was always the case. By Odalia's wording, the pair agreed that regardless of whatever happened, their children wouldn't be involved in Blight Industries. Which again, considering episodes like Escaping Expulsion, should have been massive red flags. I find this whole relationship super complicated, and I like it. To try and not sound victim blamey, I do like how it doesn't completely excuse Aldor. There wasn't a sense of Aldor and the kids toughing it out together. As shown in Understanding Willow, even from a young age, Amity saw her parents as an added unit. But I feel that thanks to reaching out, Aldor might have an extra dose of self-awareness, one he previously didn't. So, development at work. Just what I always love to see. Mittens has told her siblings about the draining spell off screen. And now, she's gonna tell Odalia. She won't believe you. Well, someone has to tell mom about the draining spell. Or else she and dad are helping Velos hurt people. Which I know you might hate, but at the end of the day, that's still her mom. And after the stride she made with Alador, maybe she thinks she could work her magic with Odalia. Hiding behind trash, Amity. To think my children are so painfully predictable in their deceit. Odalia's right, children. If you're gonna hide, at least do it in style and hide behind a bush. Amity is grounded for trying to interfere, and the twins for trying to burn down the factory. We already tried burning down the factory. That's what got us grounded, too. What was this? That would have been awesome to see. Actually, off topic, but while I think season 2B's rushing isn't that bad, it's still some degree of rushed. Like that moment here should have been what we saw. Maybe Amity could have been like, mom won't talk to us. This is the only way she'll listen. It would be more of a statement. We can shout as loud as we want, but money always shouts louder. Why does this have the same tone as 20 more adventures? Thankfully, Mittens has an awesome girlfriend, who promptly goes up to her balcony to reenact Romeo and Juliet, even if everybody misinterprets the point of the play, including the show staff. Still, if it weren't for this, we wouldn't have gotten... Oh. Disney finally got on the bandwagon of mainstream acceptance. Took them long enough. And no, I'm not getting into the other thing. I try to include politics as little as possible on this channel. I guess while I'm on the subject, the animation for the kiss was really good. Really fluid. And I know everybody's likely said it at this point, but I think it's kind of obvious that scene ate up their budget. Like this scene here. Sorry, man. Or this scene later on. But if I can do this to help, why would I refuse? I guess this is why we never saw them try to burn down the factory. Still, Amity is convinced she can talk to her mom, if just given the chance. But first, Kiki must come for the final delivery. Mrs. Blight, I hope this last shipment will be swift. Is she drinking Starbucks? Is it an Irish coffee? Like, the only way she could get through this interaction was coffee. Surprised she didn't try ice cream. Luce insists King stay hidden, which once again, stings him. If anyone asks, you're guarding the perimeter. But... <sighs> Inside the factory, Odalia unveils the latest piece of abomination warfare. Introducing the Abomatron. It's 700 snores power, has two very powered jetpacks, and comes in several shades of lilac. Hey, give her this! She's a great spokes lady. Imagine if she were human, she could totally be on the view. Sucks she's gotta be a bad mom, wife, and all around terrible person. I outfitted this one, especially for you. <laughs> 
everyone. Is that why she likes automatons? Because they make her seem bigger? If so, that is so adorable. The Scooby gang disguise themselves with illusions in an effort to find Aldor, but he's nowhere to be. It looks empty. And really sad. What's with that mouse? Like, really, what's with that mouse? I doubt it's his palisman. Is he an experiment gone amok? Did Alador shapeshift? Is he thinking of leaving Odalia for a mouse? Is it a Peter Pettigrew situation? Wait, I saw that robot chicken sketch. Get that thought out of my head. Regardless, that workplace isn't up to code if there's a freaking mouse. The Blades need an abomination who's willing to do the Charlie work. <laughs> and we are all about invaluable assets. Can't get enough of them. I'm an asset gal myself. Willow, I love you. Unfortunately, illusions only disguise your appearance, not your voice. And Hunter made the unfortunate mistake of using his. <gasps> I thought I recognized that annoying voice. <gasps> So they're exposed. Turns out, Aldor was just fine. For now. Seriously, what's up with that mouse? Is that the fourth Blight child? Amity's baby brother who stood up to his parents and tried to get into musical theater? In truth, Aldor has been relaxing on a swing set. Well, that's nice. He built his kids a swing set. Sucks they probably can't use it now due to the rigors of school. Aldor vents to a coven guard. I don't mean to vent. I, I should let you return to your duties. The Emperor's Coven uh, requires I take a meal break, so, uh, no worries? See, Luce? He's actually useful! Did I mention I haven't had a weekend off in five years? Tell me about it. I'm a YouTuber. I work in some way, shape, or form every day. So it turns out, Odalia's abuse of Aldor goes further than initially imagined. While I was recovering from the fire flu, she fired half my team and expected us to continue working at the same time. If there was a reason for him seeming so tired. Still, I like this. And to get off topic for a moment, I kind of like Aldor's development in this episode compared to say yellow and blue diamond. A problem I had with yellow and blue isn't how rushed it was for them to accept pink or Steven, but rather how rushed it was for them to realize Homeworld sucked. They implied in the very last episode of the show that yellow hates working, and blue is miserable enforcing white diamond's rules, even if all on-screen evidence points to this not being true. In flashbacks, yellow was shown to love working. Besides that, the two also held the same prejudices. As for blue, her problem was she wasn't allowed extra time to mourn pink, which even Yellow called her out on. She wasn't miserable about punishing gems who don't fit the mold. With Aldor, while I guess he kind of fell into the same trappings, the explanation they gave was pretty plausible. Especially when you look back at episodes like Escaping Expulsion, which took place during what was likely a highly hectic time at Blight Industries. I think it also helps they stretched out Aldor's development over the course of several episodes. Yeah, I think the Owl House is rushed, but when it comes to plot, they usually know what they're doing. While I think understanding Willow is proof they were gonna go with a totally different interpretation, you can always write that off as it was still Amity's memories. The show is pretty big on showing memory isn't perfect. So, once again, kudos. I'm gonna spend more time with my kids. Things are gonna change after the Day of Unity. Oh boy, yeah, let's just say there's not gonna be an after to the Day of Unity. Elsewhere, Odalia has locked up the Scooby gang. Wait, how did she get those handcuffs? I thought she was in the Oracle Coven. In the top it off, she's decided to ground the twins. And I found two adorable little scoundrels trying to steal it. But they'll be dealt with. Again, why don't we see this? On the bright side, at least she acknowledges she has other children. Really, Mittens, I'm tired of all this drama. Sneaking around in little disguises, convincing the twins to act out. Sister, you don't know the half of it. Besides, I'm sure you got into plenty of trouble yourself back in the day. Like, what about that time you dated your dad's body double? To make matters worse, Kiki goes on to reveal that the Scooby gang failed, and the cats, aha, I said it, are being led into a trap. Bellos will probably snap you in two after I hand you over. Maybe he'll make me the new golden guard. 
Wait, I thought next episode you said you knew where all the failures ended up. So shouldn't you know what happens to the Golden Guard? Okay, I was on the fence of making an apology video for you, Kiki, but I think I have more ammo than necessary. Despite the restraints, Amity is ready to kick Odalia's butt. It helps Odalia has one you could crack an almond with. Pretty sure it makes Dexter's mom envious. Girlfriend? Oh no no, that won't do. We'll find you a new girlfriend, someone who's not on wanted posters everywhere. I don't get why people are surprised at this. Dana Terra said this kind of hatred doesn't exist on the Boiling Isles. Still, Amity is angered at her mother. Uh, really? You're embarrassing yourself. Dude, even Bev Sanchez wouldn't be that cold-hearted. You could freeze lava with that comment. Go, girl! How did I do that? Was it the power of believing in myself? No! It was the power of science! But you almost had it, sweetie. Oh, or that works too. I mean, love is just a chemical reaction lesser life forms cling to. And he actually takes the chance to call her sweetie. Odalia might not listen to her daughter, but there's a good chance she'll listen to her husband. The Emperor is planning to wipe out everyone with a draining spell, and our abomatons are helping him do it. What he does with our products is none of our business. I mean, maybe she was accepting the inevitability of her demise. That line might just be how she rationalized. What is my business is keeping our family ahead of the rest. Or that. Remember back between season one and two, where we all assumed Odalia would become the new Lilith, and then escaping expulsion happened? I thought Odalia's reward would be the same as Kiki. But hey, I'm surprised she took a more active role. With the Emperor's favor, we'll live like royalty in the new world. Crowns and everything. Yeah, okay, I really wish we got to see the look on your face when you got drained. And I'm curious about how this whole thing came about. Did Odalia catch why so Bello said that to Placator? Odalia Dream Smasher Blight. You're freaking diabolical. Like, probably the worst parent I've ever seen in our cartoon. Who beat out Linda and Steven Stotch, Ashi's mom, White Diamond, and even Ozai. Yeah, the Fire Lord himself. You were willing to sell out your entire species just to get ahead. And the only reason you told your family was because you got caught. You don't care about them. And even Alador agrees. This is too much, even for you. This leads into a huge battle, and I gotta say, it's at least cool to see Oracle magic in action. Next to Potions, it's my favorite. I hated how little screen time it got. Plus, it was pretty amazing to see Gus go full Wanda Maximoff on everybody. I swear, now that Gus is in the human world, he should aspire to direct horror movies. In the snafu, Kiki captures Hunter, who is really loose in disguise. <laughs> The jetpack actually works! <laughs> uh, oh, the jetpack actually works. Despite all the flag I give Alador, that line was legitimately funny. Best joke in the episode. So it seems like the Blight family is getting fractured like a Kit Kat bar. You! I am never speaking to you again. You'll thank me when you're a literal princess, princess. Don't worry, ladies. Give it until after the Day of Unity. Then you won't have to. And finally, Aldor's character journey is complete, as he too goes full Wanda Maximoff. What's best for the family is putting an end to all this. At least we know there's no ambiguity to his survival. You're destroying our life's work. I won't let you destroy it any further. This work is finished. Also, I quit. Dude, that is so awesome. Unfortunately though, divorce isn't that simple, so you're gonna have to go to the lawyer coven sooner rather than later. I've been meaning to find a more competent business partner anyway. And he will wear a white hat and live in a van. Thankfully, he smokes the devil's lettuce, so he will be easier to control. The Scooby gang realize they might have to go to the head to rescue Luce. You're going to go rescue your friend. You'll need a pilot. Okay, it keeps getting better and better. And the sprinkle on the Sunday, he's even polite to Luz. Luz, I apologize for Adalia. 
You are always welcome at our home. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. He seemed to have no problem with her in reaching out. I bet you didn't even know I was dating Luce. Edelin's kid? Still pretty sweet after everything they've been through. And that was Clouds on the Horizon. Yeah, I know this review was more about the characters who weren't named Aldor, but it's still a majorly important episode. And overall, it's the best part of Aldor's development. But it's not the last episode to feature him, for we have King's Tide. Actually, that was an added reason I didn't talk about Clouds on the Horizon right away. Huh, I wonder what Aldor will do. Very eager to return to Belos, A eh? Golden guard at least i never built him an army watch your tone with me young man <gasps> i knew his character development wouldn't stick of course he would fall off the wagon why would i trust a fictional character dang you dana terrace for getting my hopes up for thinking there was good in this world actually just angry. I get that. Hmm? Aw, this is just like when I was a kid. Wait, is this why you call me Mittens? Way, that is so sweet. In the end, admittedly, he doesn't do much. Like, yeah, he does get them to the head, and he does give Amity the remote to disable the automatons, and he says goodbye when the draining spell happens, but that's about it. Surprised you don't show the same care and concern to your other two kids, though. He's probably alright, I assume? Still, for now, that was Outer Blight, or the third time. Despite the fact he made many of my previous videos severely outdated, I still like him, and the character journey they took with him. It's pretty unique, and they definitely redeemed him. Does it make up for everything he's done? No, but it's a start. Well, not a start, more like a finish. And hey, there's three more specials! Maybe I'll have enough material for a fourth video! <laughs> Please no!